Ghanavesa's Côte d'Ivoire. Which country is better? In recent years, there has been growing skepticism about the utility of conducting cross-section regressions for all nations in the world to determine what explains disparities in growth rates. There are too many differences, it is suggested, for such macro comparisons to be useful. In contrast, an older tradition compares countries that are similar in some ways, but vastly different in others. Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire appear to be two particularly useful comparison countries. Despite being on the same West African coast and having similar economic systems at the time of independence, they pursued vastly different economic agendas. When the British colony of the Gold Coast and the Togolan Trust territory merged in 1957, Ghana became the first sub-Saharan country in colonial Africa to gain independence. Ghana is a West African country formerly known as the Republic of Ghana. It is bounded on the west by the Ivory Coast, on the north by Burkina Faso, on the east by Togo, and on the south by the Gulf of Guinea and the Atlantic Ocean. Ghana covers a total area of 238,535 kilometers square, with biomass ranging from coastal savannas to tropical rainforests. With approximately 31 million people, Ghana is the second most populous country in West Africa after Nigeria. Accra is the country's capital and largest city. Other notable cities include Kumasi, Tamil, and Sakandi Takarati. In contrast, Côte d'Ivoire is a West African country known for its beaches, rainforests, and French colonial history. Abidjan, located on the country's Atlantic coast, is the most populous city. Among the city's modern icons are the ziggurat-like concrete La Pyramide and St. Paul's Cathedral, a swooping structure tied to a massive cross. Banco National Park is a rainforest preserve with hiking trails located north of the city's central business district. Various minor kingdoms dominated the area of Côte d'Ivoire between the 15th and 19th centuries, when European explorers arrived and began to establish their influence. Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us at Africa Reloaded. In today's video, we will compare Ghana and Côte d'Ivoire to determine which country is superior. This comparison will be based on geography and topology, economy, infrastructure, and contributions from industries such as manufacturing and tourism. Stay tuned as we compare both countries to determine who is superior. Geography and Topography Ghana Ghana is a country in West Africa, near the Gulf of Guinea and slightly north of the equator. Lowlands, low hills, rivers, Lake Volta, the world's largest artificial lake, Dodi Island, and Babawasi Island can be found on Ghana's South Atlantic Ocean coast. Geographically, Ghana is divided into four eco-regions. The coastline consists primarily of a low, sandy beach surrounded by plains and shrub, with numerous rivers and streams running through it. The northern region of Ghana has high plains. The Ashanti Uplands and Kwahu Plateau form a forested plateau region in Ghana's southwest and south-central regions. The steep Akwapamtogo Hills run along Ghana's eastern international border. Mount Afaja, at 885 meters, is located in the Akwapamtogo Mountains, which encompass most of south-central Ghana. The climate is tropical, with the eastern coastal strip hot and dry, the southwest region hot and humid, and the north warm and wet. Many tributary rivers, including the Odi and Afram, drain into Lake Volta, the world's largest artificial lake, which runs through minor areas of southeastern Ghana. Pulmakong is located in northwest Ghana, and Cape Three Points in Axum is located in the south. Ghana's latitude ranges from 4 to 12 degrees north. South Ghana has evergreen and semi-deciduous forests with trees like mahogany, odum, and ebony, as well as much of Ghana's oil palms and mangroves, whereas the northern section of Ghana has she trees, baobabs, and acacias. Côte d'Ivoire 
The Ivory Coast is a country in sub-Saharan Africa in Western Africa. It shares borders with Liberia and Guinea on the west, Mali and Burkina Faso on the north, Ghana on the east, and the Gulf of Guinea on the South Atlantic Ocean. The country's coordinates are 4 to 11 degree north latitude and 2 to 9 degrees west longitude. Agriculture accounts for 64.8% of the land, with arable land accounting for 9.1%, permanent pasture accounting for 41.5%, and permanent crops accounting for 14.2%. Water contamination is currently one of the country's most serious issues. Ivory Coast has been divided into 12 districts and two independent cities at the district level since 2011. The districts are divided into 31 regions, which in turn are divided into 108 departments, which in turn are divided into 510 subprefectures. In some cases, multiple villages may be organized into communes. The autonomous districts, which are not divided into regions, are made up of departments, subprefectures, and communes. Since 2011, the governorships of the 12 non-autonomous districts have been vacant. As a result, these districts have yet to become governmental institutions. Economy of both countries Ghana Ghana has a good supply of natural resources including industrial minerals, hydrocarbons, and precious metals. It's a digital economy in the making, with hybridized mixed economies and a growing market. The goal of the country's economic plan is Ghana Vision 2020. According to this proposal, Ghana would become the first African country to be developed between 2020 and 2029, and a newly industrialized country between 2030 and 2039. South Africa, a group of 24 member and sub-Saharan African country, is not included because it is a newly industrialized country. Ghana's economy is also linked to the Chinese Yuan Renminbi and the country's massive gold reserves. In 2013, the Bank of Ghana introduced the renminbi as hard money in Ghanaian state-owned institutions and to the general public, alongside the Ghana SETI as the country's second national trade currency. Between 2012 and 2013, 37.9% of rural residents were impoverished compared to 10.6% of urban residents. While nearly all 94% of rural poor households work in agriculture, urban areas offer more job opportunities, particularly in informal trade. Côte d'Ivoire Ivory Coast has a relatively high per capita income for the region and is an important transit country for neighboring landlocked countries. The country's economy is the largest in the West African Economic and Monetary Union, accounting for 40% of the monetary union's total GDP. The country exports the most cocoa beans in the world and is the fourth largest exporter of general goods in sub-Saharan Africa, following South Africa, Nigeria, and Angola. Cocoa bean producers earned $2.53 billion from cocoa exports in 2009, with 630,000 metric tons expected in 2013. In 2012, 100,000 rubber farmers in Ivory Coast received a total of $105 million. Since its independence in 1960, the Ivory Coast's economic growth has been aided by close relations with France, diversification of agricultural exports, and encouragement of foreign investment. In recent years, Ivory Coast's main crops, coffee and cocoa, have faced increased competition and lower prices on the global market. Indentured labor has been reported in the country's cocoa and coffee production in every edition of the United States Department of Labor's list of goods produced by child labor or forced labor since 2009. The Ivory Coast's economy has grown faster than that of most other African countries since independence. One reason for this could be taxes on exported agricultural products. The Ivory Coast, Nigeria, and Kenya were outliers since their monarchs were big cash crop producers themselves, 
and the newly independent countries did not impose punishing tax rates on exported agricultural. As a result, their economies prospered. Infrastructural Development Ghana During the 2000s, infrastructure contributed just over one percentage point to Ghana's yearly per capita GDP growth, Raising the country's infrastructure to that of the region's middle-income countries may enhance annual growth by almost 2.7 percentage points. When compared to other African low-income countries, Ghana has a well-developed infrastructure platform. The country's rural water, electricity, and GSM signal coverage levels are excellent. The road network is in good or average condition for the most part. In the ICT, ports, roadways, and water supply sectors, institutional reforms have been implemented. Ghana's most serious problems are in the power sector, where outdated transmission and distribution infrastructure, rapid demand growth, and frequent hydrological shocks have forced the country to rely on high-cost oil-based generating. Water distribution losses are unusually large, leaving little to reach end consumers, who are consequently subjected to intermittent supply. To address Ghana's infrastructure problems, annual expenditures will need to be increased to $2.3 billion. Infrastructure spending in the country is currently around $1.2 billion per year, or roughly 7.5% of GDP. Inefficiencies, such as underpricing of power, cost another $1.1 billion each year. Ghana's yearly infrastructure budget gap is estimated to be at $0.4 billion, with the majority of the cash coming from power and water. Ghana can raise additional public money via greater tax receipts as a result of its recent oil fines. The country has several good areas to build on, as well as a strong economic foundation on which to fund incremental efforts. Côte d'Ivoire between the mid-2000s and the mid-2010s, infrastructure contributed 1.8 percentage points to Côte d'Ivoire's yearly per capita GDP growth before conflict obliterated the country's infrastructure and its growth benefits. Raising the country's infrastructure to that of the region's middle-income countries might enhance growth by another two percentage points. In the 1990s, Private sector contracts resulted in increased operational performance and finance for investments in the water, power, transportation, and information technology sectors. Those contracts miraculously survived the crisis and continued to provide uninterrupted service. However, since the mid-2000s, private investment flows have dropped. The most important infrastructural challenge for Côte d'Ivoire will be regaining the financial stability required to restore a reliable energy supply, investments in terminal capacity, as well as road and rail infrastructure enhancements on hinterland linkages, will be required to re-establish Abidjan's port significance. Additional issues include a lack of financing for road repair and poor sanitation. In the mid-2000s, Côte d'Ivoire spent $750 million on infrastructure, with the majority of that going to power sector operations and maintenance. If power underpricing and other inefficiencies, worth $200 million per year, were eliminated, the country's yearly infrastructure funding shortfall would be $1 billion, and infrastructure targets could be met in 20 years. By increasing public investment from its current low level, employing more efficient technologies, and attracting extra private investment for infrastructure, Côte d'Ivoire has a high chance of closing its funding deficit. <music> Manufacturing sector Ghana Ghana's economy is evolving into a digital-based mixed economy hybrid with an increasing primary manufacturing and export of digital technology goods, as well as assembling and exporting automobiles and ships, diverse resource-rich exportation of industrial minerals, 
agricultural products primarily cocoa, petroleum and natural gas, and industries such as information and communications technology, primarily via Ghana State Digital Technology Corporation RLG Communications. Since 2014, Ghana has been producing urban electric vehicles. Côte d'Ivoire Côte d'Ivoire was one of the world's fastest-growing economies in the half-decade, following the return of political stability in 2011. Due to its domestic political instability, the country missed out on much of the developing and emerging markets boom that characterized the global economy from 2000 to 2010. But its current era of outperformance has allowed it to recover. Strong investment has been a key driver of this, particularly as the public and private sectors work to replace or restore the stock of infrastructure and capital that had deteriorated or been destroyed between 2002 and 2011. Because Côte d'Ivoire is a significant cocoa producer, accounting for around 40% of the global market, strong cocoa prices aided the country's main cash crop in 2014 and 2015 a period that also witnessed increasing oil and gas output and expanded exploration at recently discovered reserves. Tourism Sector Ghana Ghana's Ministry of Tourism is in charge of tourism regulation. This ministry is in charge of promoting and developing tourism-related activities in Ghana. Ghana's tourism business brought in $2.19 billion in 2011, thanks to an anticipated 1.1 million overseas visitors. Ghana's tourism industry brought approximately $1.7 billion in 2012 from 993,600 international visitors, employing 359,000 people. On the back of an expected 4.3 million international tourist arrivals, Ghana's tourism sector would generate $8.3 billion per year by 2027, except for specific business incubators and business magnates on business travels. All visitors to Ghana must acquire a visa issued by the Ghanaian government. Côte d'Ivoire Since the early 1970s, the tourism business in Ivory Coast has grown dramatically. In 1997, the country had 11,374 beds in 7,786 hotel rooms with a 70% occupancy rate. In 1998, 301,039 tourists arrived, with more over 73,000 from Germany, France, and the United Kingdom. Some of the main attractions include beaches, tourist settlements, and picture sapphires through nature preserves. Travel to Ivory Coast necessitates the use of a passport. Visas are not required for stays of less than 91 days, but all foreign tourists must have a yellow fever vaccination certificate. The average cost of lodging in Abidjan was $160 per day in 2002, according to the U.S. Department of State, compared to $98 in Yamasakro. Standards of Living Ghana a family of four in Ghana has an estimated monthly cost of $1,628 without rent. A single person has an estimated monthly cost of about $457 without rent. Cost of living in Ghana is, on average, 56.46% lower than in United States. Rent in Ghana is, on average, 59.57% lower than in United States. Côte d'Ivoire. A family of four in Côte d'Ivoire have an estimated monthly cost of about 1,287,116 francs CFA without rent. A single person's estimated monthly cost is 374,184 francs CFA without rent. Abidjan is 58.54% less expensive than New York without rent. Rent in Abidjan is, on average, 82.23% lower than in New York. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. At this point, I'll let you decide which country is superior. Both countries share many similarities and are amazing African countries. 
If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more exciting updates.